Drugs and alcohol played a big part in his actions on May 1st, 2021. No, this is not an excuse, but I do know from growing up around alcoholics and drug abusers that when someone is under the influence, they truly are not themselves. Dwight has expressed to me over the phone how remorseful he is, and he really does want to make things right. I believe that with counseling and drug treatment, he can learn from this tragedy and become a protective men member of society once again. Sorry. Dwight is still growing and learning at the young age of 18. He understands there are many areas he needs to learn and improve on. He does have plans for his future and has discussed with me and multiple family members his ideas of turning his life around and furthering his education, even from behind bars. While Dwight was incarcerated in JD, his teacher would call me once a week so proud of the work he was doing. He came into JD with only three credits. And within the 12 months he was there, Dwight buckled down and only had six credits left to graduate. My son, Dwight, has a lot of potential, Your Honor. Given the right tools, along with positive and supportive family, Dwight can change his future for the better. The possibility of Dwight not getting the chance of parole and proving to not only himself, but to the courts that he can and will become a changed man absolutely crushes me. It's never my intention to upset or offend anyone, so I do apologize beforehand. The night of April 30th, just hours before May 1st of 2021, I know my son was not in his right state of mind. And when I, and when I left for work, I know my son was drunk, high, and high on something. I replay that night in my head over and over, I remember placing him in bed and taking his shoes off and covering him up before leaving for work, debating on if I should call him to work and take him to the hospital. There was a time a few years back when Dwight came home drunk once before that I did take him to the hospital because of him being incoherent and able, unable to lift his head, only to be told by the doctor he just needs to sleep it off and boys will be boys. So I believe the visit made me, so I believe that visit made me decide not to overreact this time and that's why I didn't take him. I also go over in my mind what my 14 year old daughter told me about the night as well. She still feels some type of guilt because she should have protected her older brother from Lawrence and Jordan Hill that night. <laughs> She beats herself up. <sighs> Sorry. She beats herself up sometimes, mad at herself for not calling the police or telling me when I called at midnight to check on her and her brother. She has nightmares of Lawrence and Jordan Hill carrying my son out the house that night and her begging them to put her brother back in his bed. I have assured my daughter it's not her fault many of times. Because of the depression and anxiety that night has caused her, she has been receiving therapy since May of 2021 due to how traumatic that night was for her. I truly believe my son acted out of fear from what Lawrence and Jordan Hill might have done to him or his little sister if he did not comply. I believe my son was not capable at the time to make any rational decisions out of fear along with the effects of the alcohol and drugs that were in his system. I truly believe he was driven on impulsiveness and in the inability to think before he reacted because of a multitude of disabling factors. I feel Dwight being young and not fully matured, his mind froze up in, very, in a very hostile situation and he didn't quite have the mental capacity to figure out his way out of it. Fear is a powerful emotion and it can interrupt the process in our brains that allow us to regulate emotions. We nonverb cues and other information presented to us. It can stop us from thinking before acting and it can stop us from not acting ethically. Fear impacts our thinking and decision making in negative ways, leaving us open to intense emotions and impulsive reactions. All of these 
effects can leave us unable to act appropriately. On top of that, paired with Dwight's documented and disability, mental disability, I truly believe Dwight's ability to process what was happening was extremely distorted and difficult for him. Regardless of all this, I understand my son's actions were devastating and caused a tremendous amount of heartache and pain. I also understand my son does need to be punished. I understand justice needs to be served for the victim's family. And they have every right to what justice served. I do plead with the courts to please take into consideration what I have described and what I truly feel happened that night when deciding his sentencing. None of the above are excuses. And again, I apologize if anyone takes what I've spoken as that but I truly do feel they should be taken into consideration when deciding a young man's, deciding if a young man should spend the rest of his life behind bars without the possibility of parole. Thank you, Your Honor, for giving me this opportunity to voice my feelings and concerns regarding my son Dwight. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Owen.